welcome to another lesson in this series about databases. Our previous lessons showed examples of different databases and how to create your own database and design a table. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use data sheet view to enter and save data into a table. Select and format certain sections in a table. Find a particular record. In the previous lesson, we used the table design view to modify a table. We added fields and changed the data types and formatted the fields. Today, we're going to switch to the table data sheet view to work with the contents of the fields, the data. Salai, so, can you remember how to switch to data sheet view? Of course I do. All you do is that you click on the icon on the top left corner. Correct. In data sheet view, you can see all the field names as column headings and each row will contain the data from one record, in our case, one book. Let's enter the data for this book. The ISBN number is next to the barcode 043-955-4926. The title, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. The author, J.K. Rowling. The publisher name, Arthur A. Levine Books. The format, soft cover. The purchase price, 339 Rand 95 cents. Number of copies, three. Available to borrow, yes. Date purchased, 14th of November 2005. So, how would you enter a picture for the cover? Well, first of all, you need to have the picture available on your disc. There are different ways of getting hold of the pictures of book covers. I have downloaded them from the internet and saved them to disc, naming them according to their ISBN number. You can also scan the cover pages of the books and save the pictures in the same folder as your database. To enter these pictures in the cover picture field, right click in the field and click insert object. Then choose create from file and browse to find the picture file for the cover sheet for the particular book. In this case, 043955426 JPEG. Hmm, but I don't see a picture. We will be able to see these pictures in form view and report view, but you will have to wait for the next lesson to see how to do that. The next field is the purchase date. In business, a data capturer will enter the records of purchases and usually the purchase date is the date you input the details of the data. So for example, if I stored all details of a certain book today, I would want today's date reflected in the purchase date column. Instead of typing in the date for each record, you can set a default value to enter the current data automatically. A default value specifies a value that is automatically entered in a field when a new record is created. You can still decide to enter another value, then the default value is ignored. All you have to do is to set the default value property for the purchase date to date empty brackets, which is a built-in function or part of your database program to display the current date. The default value property is applied only when you add a new record. It won't change the existing records as you will see in our table. You can use the required property to specify whether a value is required in a field. If this property is set to yes, when you enter data in a record, you must enter a value in the field and the value cannot be nothing or null. The primary key field's required property is always set to true, so you cannot leave out the field that uniquely identifies the record. In our example, it is the ISBN number. Let's enter one more record. Don't you have to save the previous record first? You don't need to click Save to save new data in records. Access automatically saves a record when you move the pointer to enter a different record. Access also gives you the option to save changes to your table design whenever you close the table or exit Access. Let's enter one more record, ISBN number 07. 47545774 page title 
Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Special edition author, J.K. Rowling. Publisher name, Bloomsbury Publishers. Purchase price, 329 Rand 95 cents. Number of copies, one. Available to borrow, yes. Note that the purchase date field is automatically filled with the current date. Close the table. When the table is opened again, you will see that both records were saved. When data is entered into the data sheet view, you have to scroll left, then right to enter data into all the fields. Now, I find it hard to enter data when the name of the book and the ISBN number scrolls off the screen. Then I'm not sure which book's data I'm working with. A useful feature is to freeze a column. If you want the ISBN number and title to stay on screen, you can freeze these columns. To do this, simply right-click in the columns you want to keep on screen and click Freeze Column. You can do this for the ISBN number and title fields. Now, it is easy to see the name of the book at all times when the other fields are filled. Once you have captured the data, it is possible to format, edit, delete, move, spell, check or print data from a table. Hmm. And to edit the previous entry, I suppose all you have to do is simply click in the cell and just tap over the existing text. To delete an entire record, click the grey button to the left of the record to highlight the whole row and then press delete. A pop-up window will ask for confirmation before the record is deleted. To rename the column, or in other words, the field name, select the column, then right-click and click Rename. Let's rename Publisher Name to simply Publisher. You can also select a column and right-click to hide or delete a column. To move the column, you click the column selector, that is the grey button above the column, and then drag the column to the new position. Let's move the format field to after publisher. To check the spelling of all text in the data sheet, click on the grey button where the row selectors and column selectors meet at the left-hand top corner of the table to select the entire data sheet. Then click on the spell check icon on the table data sheet toolbar. You can also use the row and column selectors to select part of the data sheet and then check the spelling of the entries. So what is the purpose of these buttons here at the bottom? You can use the navigation toolbar to move through the records in a data sheet and quickly find a particular record. Go to the previous record. Go to the first record. Type a record number to move to and press enter. Go to the next record. Go to the last record. Go to a blank new record. Hmm. When there are many records, it is easier to find the records you're looking for if it's all sorted out. But how does one go about doing that? To sort the data according to one of the fields, simply right-click the column selector and choose ascending or descending order. Ascending order sorts values from A to Z or 0 to 9. Descending order sorts values from Z to A or 9 to 0. Note that the records are sorted and not only the columns selected. That means the related fields will always stay together. If you sort the data sheet by author, you will effectively group all the records by the same author. Sorting will also enable you to easily find the oldest book if you sort by release year. Oh, this works the same as spreadsheets. But Don, please explain how one goes about printing the data. Mm. To print all the data in the table, you can simply click the print icon while the data sheet is open. To print only certain records in the data sheet, first select the records you want to print. On the file menu, click print and then click Selected Records. The best way to print records is using the Report Database object, which will be discussed in a later lesson. Earlier, we sorted the data so that we could easily find a particular record or value. Another way to search for a particular value in a table or field is to use the Find function. You have to right-click the column selector and then click Find. 
you can enter the whole value or part of it and in the pop-up window you choose whether the search should cover the whole table or only the particular field you have selected. Say we want to look for a book with the word Azkaban in the title. Right click the column selector for title and then click Find. Fill in Azkaban and select any part of field under the drop down menu for match. Then click Find Next until you find the book you are looking for. In the next lesson, we will discuss forms. Forms can be changed or customized to suit the needs of an individual or business. You will learn how to design a form that can be easily understood by anyone reading it. In this way, we will design a better user interface. You need to do some research in preparation for the next lesson. Here's your task. Find at least three examples of online forms. Evaluate the different layouts of data capture forms from a visual perspective. For example, you may ask the question, which colors work well together? Consider how the design could be changed to make it easier for the user to complete the form. Thank you for joining us in this lesson on databases. Don't forget to go to our website for more information. Till next time, keep well.